Elizabeth at A Literary Princess and today I am talking to you about my 2024 reading goals. So in this I'm going to talk briefly about what my goals spreadsheet looks like because I actually do have one this year <laughs> even though I don't usually. I got the idea from Katie over at Books and Things. Mine is not nearly as intense as hers but I still thought it would be fun. I'm also going to be talking about my 50 books that I want to read in 2024. For the past I don't know how many years I have made a list of 50 books I want to read in the new year and then I like to see at the end if I read them. I did not read all of them in 2023 so you were going to see some repeats. So let's jump in. To start with what am I setting my Goodreads? challenge to. So last year I actually no we go back further we go back to 2022. <laughs> in 2022 I for the first time did not make my goal in a really long time. I think I had set it at 100 and I didn't make it. So or I guess I th we go back even further for 2021 I think that was 2021 and then in 2022 I set it to 50. And I made that. I made almost double it. I almost got to 100. So for 2023, I had set the goal to 100 again. And then in February, I was in a terrible reading slump. And I was like, you know what? Screw this. And I put it back to 50. And I've decided I really like 50 as the number for the Goodreads challenge because I know I'm going to get there since my job is largely reading. So I know I'm going to read 50 or more books. And then I don't know, it just makes me feel good about myself. Is that stupid? Yes. Should the amount of books I read in a year have any effect on my self worth? No. Does it make me happy when I meet the goal? Yes. So it's fine. We're going to go with 50 again this year. And then I know I'll make that and I'll be happy and it will give me that little boost of serotonin that I need. So for the first time in ever, I've actually like allotted a certain number of books to different categories. So I've broken those 50 books into eight different categories. And then I have also added an extra category that I haven't accounted books for. And that's library reads. So I would really like to start using my public library more. I have been using it consistently. I get my audiobooks from there through Libby. I do take a few books out of the public library every year, like a few of them every year. But I want to do more. I want to make a point to read one library book a month. So I have put 12 library books in my spreadsheet, but those are not accounted for in the 50 books that I have chosen. So the categories for the 50 books I have chosen are my, um, my dissertation authors, other Victorian literature, other classics, fairy tale retellings, fantasy, nonfiction, rereads, and other reads. So I am going to take you through the 50 books I have chosen to be on the list for each of those categories and <laughs> we'll see if I make it <laughs> at the end of 2024. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So the first category is my dissertation authors. I have four authors that I'm looking at in my dissertation. Margaret Oliphant, Mary Elizabeth Braddon, Ouida, and Charlotte Rydell. So I have decided to put two books by each of them for a total of eight books in this category. So for Margaret Oliphant, we first have The Ladies Lindors. Oh, this keeps coming up in my reading about Oliphant. I don't really know anything about it other than that, <laughs> that people do talk about this one. So, but I have it in my Kindle edition of her collected works. So I thought it would be fun. It sounds interesting. You know. The other by Margaret Oliphant is The Perpetual Curate, which is the next book that I have to read in the Chronicles of Carlingford. So this is the fifth work in the series. It is the third novel. And 
I've heard a lot about this one too in my reading on Margaret Oliphant. I have been introduced to the characters who are going to be the major characters in the previous Carlingford books. They were minor characters. So I am very excited to get to this one. I have been absolutely loving the Chronicles of Carlingford. For Braddon, the first one I have is The Doctor's Wife. So this was Braddon's kind of first attempt at a non-sensation novel. And she does, it's very much um, a critique of reading and writing and this, the idea that like reading can, the wrong things can make you do ridiculous things. It is kind of a retelling of Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert. And I'm really excited to look at this. There is a character whose name I straight up can't pronounce and I'm not going to try, but he is a novelist and he writes sensation fiction, although he dreams of writing a great novel, which is kind of exactly what Braddon wanted to do. So I am looking at her representation of this author and how that plays into the reputation that she had as an author. The other book that I want to read by her is Eleanor's Victory. I, I have no idea what this is about. It just sounded fun. I have it on my Kindle edition of her works, so I figured it would be a good time. So for Ouida, we have Ariadne, which is one of her Italian novels and is focused on a female artist. And then we also have Princess Napraxine, which I was like trying to read this year and just didn't. So you know, let's get that done. And then for Charlotte Rydell, I have Her Mother's Darling, which I know nothing about because I can't find a summary of it anywhere. Where I have by Rydell is Mort Tumley's Estate, which I don't really know much about either <laughs> because, you know, you can't find a summary of any of these. Definitely want to read more by Rydell. I really enjoyed A Struggle for Fame. I liked weird stories. Oh, in addition to the eight books that I want to read by these four Victorian authors, I also have an other Victorian literature category, which has 10 books in it. And the first of these is The Daisy Chain by Charlotte Mary Young, which was on my 2023 list and I didn't get to it. I'm considering talking about Young in my dissertation as well, because she was another very productive woman writer of the time. I'm just not sure if she's ultimately going to make it in there. So I do have two books from her in this other Victorian literature category. So I kind of treated her like one of my dissertation authors, but also not really. I don't know. I've only read one book by her, uh, The Clever Woman of the Family, but I really enjoyed it. So I'm expecting to enjoy The Daisy Chain. We also have Deerbrook by Harriet Martineau. Martineau was a fairly early Victorian woman novelist and is kind of important for the development of women writers as a profession. So I do want to check out some of her books because I think, while they're not going to be the focus of my dissertation, I'll definitely be talking about her. Now we have Far From the Madding Crowd <laughs> by Thomas Hardy, which was on my 2023 list, which I really, really, really wanted to get to in 2023 because why have I not read this book? It didn't happen. Victober was a slow reading month for me, so it did not happen. But this year, it's happening. This year, it's happening. Also within this whole list are the rest of my George Eliot project reads, since that didn't get finished in 2023. So we have Felix Holt the Radical, which will be coming up in January. I still know nothing about this book. but I'm gonna find out in January. <laughs> Here's the other Charlotte Mary Young. This is The Heir of Redcliffe. I have heard fantastic things about this book from Kate Howe, so I am excited for it. Another one that was on the 2023 list, this is Ideala by Sarah Grand. It is a new woman novel, the first in a trilogy that I have just read not in order at all. So, you know, let's, let's get to that. <laughs> Again, Victober didn't go very well for me. Oh well. More George Eliot, The Impressions of <sighs> Theophrastus Such. This is going to be the last book of the George Eliot project. Um, I don't even know what month that's going to be happening in. I 
can't count. <laughs> Yet another one from the previous list. This is Mistress and Maid by Dinah Mullet Crake. It's titled A Household Story. I'm not really sure if it's a short story or a novel. I have it on Kindle, so I have no idea how long it is. So that will be interesting to see. I don't really know what it's about other than what the title suggests. New Grub Street by George Gissing, which I am going to have a physical copy of. It was one of my Christmas gifts from my mother. There was just an issue with additions and it had to be returned. I am kind of reading this partly for context for my dissertation because it deals with the late 19th century literary marketplace. And then the final book in the Victorian literature category is The Way We Live Now by Anthony Trollope, which I started for Victober this year and DNF'd just be like didn't ha I just didn't have the mental space for it I guess and also the edition I was reading was a really old library copy and it was like falling apart. I had put this on my Christmas list it my mom didn't get it for me which is fine. I'm going to be buying myself a copy in the new year. So those are the 10 other Victorian literature that I want to read. Now we go to other classics for which there are six. So these are classics that are not from the Victorian period. We've got some Regency, we've got 18th century, we've got some ancients on here, we've got we've got all kinds of stuff. So first up we have Antigone by Sophocles. So this is one of the three Theban plays. I have read Oedipus Rex or Oedipus the King and this was the first one written but it's actually the last one if you go chronologically. I don't know. I've had this since high school because we were supposed to read it along with Oedipus Rex and we didn't. So it's just been sitting here unread for almost 15 years, more than 15 years. I don't even know anymore. Yeah, just under 15 years. So I figured I would read it for Ancients Athon, which I forget what month that happens in, but I'm sure I will start getting recommendations for the announcement videos when it is time. So that is my plan to participate in Ancients Athon, which I have never participated in before. But I really would like to read more ancient literature because I don't, haven't really read a whole lot of it other than the Iliad and parts of the Odyssey and Oedipus Rex and Euripides Medea. So yeah, Shelley Swearingen spoke very highly of Antigone, so I'm looking forward to it. Next up, we have one that was on the previous list that was meant to be both Feb Regency and March of the Mammoths for 2023, and now it's going to be those for 2024, hopefully. <laughs> this is Cecilia by Francis Burney. <laughs> this thing is so big. It's so stupidly large. Anyway, I like kind of made fun of myself. I was like, girl, what did you think you were doing? You're not, you're, you weren't going to read that. And like, I'm kind of like a little bit like, girl, you're not going to read that, but I am going to read it. I'm going to make this happen. Okay, this, this is happening. The first of two French classics that are actually in French. This is the fairy tales of Charles Perrault or um, Contes. And this edition is edited by Scott Fitch and it has some translations down at the bottom for words that you might not know. So it's good for like somebody who's still learning French like I am. So, I really want to be able to read in French, so I'm making it happen this year. Here we have one for Jane Austen July. This is Love and Friendship, one of her early works. It was on my list for last year. It didn't happen. I have a physical copy. I don't even want to talk about the physical copy right now. It has uncut pages and I attempted to cut them. It wasn't pretty. So I'm just gonna like get a Kindle edition of this or something because yeah. And my other French classic. This is The Stranger or L'Etranger by Albert Camus. I bought this in 2023 and I'm very much looking forward to reading it. And the last one in the other classics section is for Shaketember. This is The Winter's Tale by William Shakespeare. I was going to read this this Shaketember and it just didn't happen. It is one of the two remaining plays that I have actually seen performed but have not read physic like read the play so I'm excited for it it's definitely a weird one and I think it'll be challenging but I'm looking forward to it 
The next category is fairy tale retellings. Now for 2023, I had 12 of them on my list. I was going to do one each month and do a fairy tale Friday on each of them and alternate between posting them here on YouTube and on my blog. Um, that didn't happen. I did almost read all of them, but I've decided I'm going to cut down to six. So I'll do one every other month. And the Fairy Tale Fridays will only be posted on YouTube. There will be no blog posts because none of them got posted last this past year. So the first one is The Book of Gothel by Mary McMinn. This is a Rapunzel retelling. We then have The Mirror Season by Anna Marie McLemore, which is a retelling of The Snow Queen. We have The Night Dance by Suzanne Wen, which is a 12 Dancing Princesses retelling and very cute and short. Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim, which is a retelling of The Six Swans, also with some elements of the Goose Girl, apparently, according to a friend I have who has read it. Thorn Hedge by T. Kingfisher, which I believe is a Sleeping Beauty retelling, or at least drawing on Sleeping Beauty. And finally, one that's a carryover from the 2023 list. This is The Wolf in the Woodsman by Ava Reed. I will be reading this one in January. So next up, we have six other fantasy books that are not retellings. The first of these is Emily Wilde's Map of Other of the Other Lands by Heather Fawcett. I have this as an arc. It actually comes out in January of 2024. So my plan is to basically start it on January 1st. <laughs> I loved Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, which came out in January 2023, which I also had an arc of. So I'm very excited for this. Next up is Fairy Tale by Stephen King. This is another carryover from the previous list. It is King's take on a portal fantasy. I'm very excited for it. Just didn't get to it last year. We have The Goblin Emperor by Catherine Addison. I've heard such amazing things about this and I am very excited for it. A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee, which is a young adult dark academia featuring witches. It has been on so many TBRs and I just still haven't gotten to it. I have this beautiful Owl Crate edition with like sprayed silver edges and like fancy cover and like ugh, hold on, illustrated inside of the dust jacket. And I just like haven't read it yet. And I need to. So we're doing it. Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Sujimura, which was also on the 2023 list. This is a portal fantasy. It is Japanese literature translated. And I've heard such amazing things about it. And I really want to read it. So let's try to do it this time. Yeah. And finally, for the fantasy, we have A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed, which I just got for Christmas. This was her 2023 release. I just really love Ava Reed, okay? I've only read one book by her, but I really enjoyed it, and I've heard such good things about this. I have a category that I am calling other fiction, which also has six books in it. Basically, other fiction is it's not fantasy, and it's not a classic, and it's still fiction. So, yeah. First book in this category is The Biographer's Tale by A.S. Byatt. I've had this on my shelf for a few years now. By it just recently passed away. She wrote one of my absolute favorite books, Possession, which I considered rereading for Remember December, and then I didn't. <laughs> um, so I do want to read more of her works. I have read Possession and her novella collection, Angels and Insects. So I have two unread novels by her, and I figured it's time to do it. Biographer's Tale has been on my shelf longer than the other one, so we're going with this. We have Bitter Orange by Claire Fuller. So this book has actually been on previous lists, but it was not on last year's lists because I kept not getting to it. So I was like, well, you're not going to get to it. But I really want to now. I believe this is gothic taking place in like an English country house. And I remember it being recommended for fans of Sarah Waters, which is probably why I asked for it. It was a gift, which is another reason that I want to get to it. It's been on my shelves for a while. So like, chop, chop, Elizabeth, get to it. What I just bought recently is Dear Committee Members by Julie Schumacher. This just sounded so fun and kind of poking fun at academia, which, you know me, I love doing that. <laughs> In a similar 
green to bitter orange we have the idiot which has been on my shelf forever which has been on multiple of these lists before i actually got halfway through this not last not in 2023 but in 2022 and then didn't finish it not because i didn't like it but because I had read it over such a long span of time that I felt I wasn't getting the full effect and I wanted to come back to it when I was not like so busy that I could only read a page every two weeks or something really stupid. I was reading it for a very long time. So I think this is going to be that year. I've heard amazing things about this, especially from Alana Estelle. And I was enjoying what I was reading. I just wasn't getting time to read it. So now I will have time to read it. Next up, we have They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. This is another new addition to my shelves. It has a piece of dust on it. This is Dark Academia, um, focused on a professor who is a serial killer, which just sounded so fun. I've heard good things about it. I've heard a paper presented on it at a conference. So I'm looking forward to it. And then the final one in the fiction or the other fiction category is one that I got for Christmas. This is Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang. I've heard mixed things about this. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I really loved Kuang's babble. So I'm looking forward to seeing what this is like. We are coming toward the end. <laughs> um, next, we have the nonfiction category, which I have five books in. The first is one that has been on a bajillion lists and that I keep meaning to read and never reading. This is How to Be a Victorian by Ruth Goodman. I've heard such good things about this. I bought it at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London and I just really want to get to it. I'm like, why, is this, why have I had this since 2019 and not read it? So another one that I'm like, why have I not read this yet? It, this was on the 2023 list. This was Jane Austen, A Life by Claire Tomlin. I'm going to read this in Jane Austen, July. Next, we have Richard and John, Kings at War by Frank McLynn. This belonged to my brother. It was his favorite book. So I really want to read it um, because it was his favorite, but also because I gave it to him. So, you know, I was always very happy that I gave him one of his favorite books. So... I've decided it's time to read this. Um, for those of you who might not know, my brother passed away in 2022 and I inherited a good chunk of his books. So I wanna read this one. This is a rough shape. <laughs> like, look at this. Oh man. But yeah, I'm interested. It's not a time period I know anything about. So it'll be fun. Next up is one that I have out of the library. I actually have it on interlibrary loan, so I'm probably going to have to return it and then get it back out because those only last so long. Um, but I have it at my office on campus and not here, which is why I'm not holding up the physical copy. This is Sensational Victorian, The Life and Fiction of Mary Elizabeth Braddon by Robert Lee Wolfe. This is, I think, one of the first biographies of Braddon. Robert Lee Wolfe was a very important figure in recovering her and her work. And so since she's one of the authors I'm working with, I, of course, should read this biography. I have read a biography of her before, a more recent one, which was pulling a lot off of Wolfe's work. So I'm interested to read it. We'll see. And then the final nonfiction is a new addition to my shelves that I got for Christmas. This is Sister Novelists, Trailblazing Porter Sisters Who Paved the Way for Austin and the Brontes by Devani Lucer. I have never heard of the Porter Sisters. This was recommended to me by an alumni from my program and I'm very excited for it. It seems really good. It's nice and chunky. <laughs> and now we are just down to the three rereads. So for this, we have two George Eliot books in here because the George Eliot project, and I had read these before. First, we've got Daniel Deronda, which is Eliot's last published novel. And I adore this. It may end up beating out Romola for my favorite. We'll see what happens, but I'm really looking forward to rereading this. And then we have my nemesis. 
middle March. <sighs> Look, this it took me three times trying to read this before I finally finished it. And I liked parts of it. I had some issues. I had a lot of issues. I had many issues. However, Obviously, I'm doing the George Eliot project and reading her fiction in publication order, so I've got to read Middlemarch again. I'm really hoping to like it better this time because I know so many people who adore it. It's one of Shelley Swearingen's top books of 2023. Another YouTuber who I love, Kate File, it's one of her favorite books. So I'm like, why can't I love Middlemarch? I really just want to love it. So we'll see what happens. And then the final reread is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, which I will be reading for Jane Austen July. I don't think I've read this since high school, <laughs> which I read it multiple times in high school, but it's not on my Goodreads, which means that I haven't read it since my junior year of college. So I think the last time I read it might have been my senior year of high school which is crazy to me because that was a really long time ago. And I love this book. It's one of my favorites. So I think it's time for a reread. So those are my plans for 2024. Those are the 50 books that I'm hoping to get to. Will I get to all of them? Probably not. I never do. And I'll get to a ton of others in it that weren't on this list because I'm a mood reader <laughs> and I just kind of do what I want after making all these grand plans. But I do still, I'm going to read 50 books no matter what. I'll probably read far more than 50. And I will be trying to get one book out of the library every month, whether that is through Libby on an audiobook or just going to the library and getting a physical book. So let me know down in the comments below. Have you read any of these? What did you think? What are your reading plans for 2024? It has been great chatting with you. I will see you soon. Bye.